Hi YouTube, today I'm going to be giving you guys a video tutorial on how to replace the radiator on your 6th generation Honda Civic. The 6th generation Honda Civic runs from years 1996 through 2000, uh, commonly referred to as the EK chassis from Honda. Now the procedure to replace the radiator is exactly the same in all 7th generation Honda Civics, regardless of whether they're coupes or sedans, single cam engines or twin cam engines. Um, the basis of how we're going to do it is exactly the same. Now in this particular model, there's actually no air conditioning, which helps us simplify the removal and reinstall process a little bit better. Now the reason why we need to replace the radiator, with about an hour's time, uh, a jug of coolant and some basic tools, you can quite easily replace your very own radiator in your 6th generation Honda Civic. I hope you found this video useful and informative. Rate, comment, and subscribe here. Uh, you can feel like the rad cap is still really hot and never under any circumstances open up this rad cap when the engine has been run recently. You should at least allow the car to cool down for an hour or two before opening this up or opening up the drain petcock at the bottom of the rad. Now to drain the radiator we can actually locate the drain petcock through this opening in the lower front air dam. You can sort of see that there's a little spigot up in there and basically we're just going to use a pair of pliers and twist that open to drain the coolant. With the petcock valve fully opened, allow the radiator to completely drain. Open up the rad cap to introduce air into the radiator core to speed up the draining process. Disconnect the coolant overflow reservoir, giving the upper overflow tube that attaches to the radiator neck a light twist with our pliers just to break this rubber seal on the actual next nipple and then pull it off and then to remove the actual coolant reservoir, lift it straight up and out like this. Remove the upper radiator hose clamp. To loosen the radiator hose just give it a twist again to break the seal on the hose against the neck of the radiator. And then just tuck it out of the way into the engine bay. Using a 10 millimeter ratchet remove the fan shroud from the radiator's backside. Feel free to use some WD-40 on the fan mounting points located here and here. Now on the fan assembly, there's actually four bolts in total. Two on the top, as you can see in the video, and then two directly on the bottom. Disconnect the cooling fan power connector located right here. By just using a screwdriver and pressing carefully onto the release tab, and then pulling straight up. Because we've undone the four screws holding the fan assembly to the radiator, removed. This is where the lower screws attach to the radiator. And on this particular car, both of the lower screws actually broke. So it may be a wise idea that when you are um, planning to replace the radiator, that you consider buying two replacement screws um, that will actually go in place on the lower part of the new radiator so this fan can properly be reattached to the car. Remove the upper radiator mount bracket, which is held with a single 10 millimeter screw. Remove the bracket by lifting straight up. And then we can now sort of shift the radiator off of the mounting studs in the engine bay area to gain better access to remove the lower radiator hose clamp. And since this radiator is useless to us anyways, bend this hose in this manner, undo the lower rad hose. to break the hose free from the lower neck. And when you remove the radiator, make sure that you pay attention to the rubber feet that are actually stuck on the bottom of the rad. These actually need to go back onto the new radiator prior to reinstallation onto the engine bay area. Now this is what the engine bay looks like after the rad's been removed. And I had mentioned earlier that there's some sort of um, feet the radiator sits in in the frame and this is what it is and these are those rubber caps that I had mentioned earlier uh, that came off on one side of the old radiator they're basically rubber isolation mounts that sit inside the frame like this and then the rad stud sits in here and that's just basically to isolate the radiator from vibration and to sort of mounted properly so that there's no rubbing and chafing. Um, now I did mention at the beginning of the video that all 6th generation Honda Civics basically have the same radiator replacement procedure and for the most part it is but I actually failed to mention that if you have an automatic version that there's actually um, 
a transmission cooler inlet uh, in and out located on, on this aftermarket rad. And of course, if your Honda has an automatic, then your replacement or your rad that you'd pull out would have lines attached to these two points. Again, if you have an automatic, it comes with these little sort of funky spigot pieces that the tranny hose is attached to. So our new radiator needs just a little bit of preparation work because unlike the Honda rad, the lower cooling fan mounting uh, threads are actually not embedded inside the radiator housing and come as a separate piece in the hardware kit that's attached to the rad and basically all it is is just these little sort of square nut um, threaded nuts here that go into the radiator which will then um, loosely install the lower uh, cooling fan uh, shroud screws now I said to replace the two lower screws and luckily in my Honda tool kit here or bucket of bolts, I found an old bolt that matched the one that uh, broke and matched sets. I'm just going to go ahead and coat them with some anti-seize and then just loosely thread them in such that I can actually place the fan shroud assembly onto the new radiator. Now, uh, before you do any work or any further work, and to make sure that you actually don't damage the radiator, because I've actually seen people use 10 millimeter nuts or screws, sorry, that were way too long, and then actually ended up forcing uh, the screw through the radiator tank. So what I'm trying to do here is, you look at the fan, it actually has notches kind of cut out here on the bottom to allow you to just drop the fan onto these studs that are sticking out. Um, so you slide them on like this and then what you're going to do is you're just going to hand tighten them down and then you're going to take a look inside of this spot here to make sure that the bolt doesn't contact the radiator tank body um, such that it would actually puncture it. We're going to leave the lower cooling fan screws in place because if I don't leave them in then the back nut piece here that it threads into will just keep falling out. And remove the old hose clamps and install or loosely install the new replacement screw clamps. Now when you're installing your hose clamps you might want to pay attention to the orientation of your hose clamp such that when the radiator is mounted in and should you ever develop a leak because the clamp wasn't quite tightened down properly um, that you have an easy means of reaching your screwdriver down to tighten it without having to actually remove the rad and try to fold it up and get it out of the way. Reinstall the radiator assembly into the engine bay. Now one thing we can do right now as well is we can just the reinstall the lower rad hose and then carefully drop the rad down. Now make sure you pay particular attention to the bottom of the mounting points in the engine bay to make sure that those rubber grommets are still in place and then just align your radiator pegs onto those rubber grommets and then press firmly down and if everything fits together perfectly you should be able to easily reattach the upper bracket and not have a gigantic gap or have it sitting in a weird position taking our trusty anti-seize compound but you want to coat everything in that anti-seize compound to ease the reinstallation and to prevent corrosion from forming should you ever need to remove this again in the future. Adjust our lower rad hose. Um, make sure that it's fully pressed onto the neck of the lower radiator. And then basically just kind of give it a wiggle and let it sort of naturally reposition itself on that water outlet neck so that you don't have any weird twisting forces on your hose. Tighten our hose clamps hand tight. Reinstall the fan shroud assembly. What we're going to do is that we're going to align the lower fan shroud mounting points onto the bolts that we had loosely installed on the radiator. So again, inside our hardware kit we've got these sort of nut backing or nut backers that just go into the slots of our radiator like this. And then just press our shroud up against it and screw everything in. With all four bolts installed on the fan shroud, hand tighten them all. Plug your radiator cooling fan power connector back in, making sure that it firmly snaps in place. 
we attach the upper radiator hose. Now, if you're having trouble getting either a new hose on, if you decide to replace these hoses, um, or you can't get your old hose on properly, it always helps to just wet the inside of the hose with a bit of water or some straight coolant um, to act as a slight, or as a lubricant, sorry, to get the hose on easier. We install the coolant overflow tank by sliding it back into the holding slot, like this, and then reattach the hose onto the radiator fill neck. Fill the cooling system with a 50-50 mixture of pre-mixed coolant. So when your coolant level gets that high, we start up our engine so that it draws in all the coolant into the block and begins circulating the coolant through the cooling system. So after repeated squeezes here, I can barely get any more coolant into this filler. And the upper hose is already getting really warm and it's only been a few minutes. So I would say that that's a safe assumption that it's going to be as full as we can get. So the next step is we're going to replace the radiator cap and allow the engine to warm up, fill the overflow coolant container almost to the very top because what's going to happen as the engine warms up, the water jacket inside the engine block and radiator is going to expand and then push any air bubbles out through this hose into this reservoir and as the engine cools off it's going to draw back coolant to top off the system. With about an hour's time, uh, a jug of coolant and some basic tools, you can quite easily replace your very own radiator in your 6th generation Honda Civic. I hope you found this video useful and informative. Rate, comment and subscribe.